You probably thought I forgot about you. I didn't. It's been a really rough couple days. It's been really hot. And what I'm about to show you isn't even a boat. So suck on that. It is, however, an RV. And RVs generally are coated with gel coat. Some are painted. Some of your more expensive coaches are definitely painted. But this one has some gel coat. And it also has some really hammered on decals. And the decals have been cooked in the sun. I was able to get the gel coat to shine up pretty nice. That's just a little strip that I did just because it was in front of my face. But then... I was able to get a little bit of a shine out of the decals. Now, it's not perfect. You can still see they're cracked out and still the reflection isn't quite as pronounced as I would like it to be. But I'm going to show you how you can take your RV and do the same thing. So go grab yourself some 3M Heavy Cut, a double-sided wool pad, and a quick connect adapter. You don't have to use the double-sided wool pad and the quick connect adapter that are made for each other. Just make sure you have a good wool pad. I highly suggest the 3M ones. I don't get paid for saying this. I just know that they work. Spread out your heavy cut. You're going to see that the buffer is going to be a little choppy and hoppy. And the reason for that is a number of reasons. One, it's a flat buffer on a curved surface. That's reason one. Reason two is it's a textured surface because the decal is all chalked out. That's reason two. And the third reason is I've got a gritty compound on top of a gritty surface so the buffer has a lot to grab onto and it wants to and because it's on a curved surface you have to have that buffer sitting almost perfectly perpendicular to the surface that it's dealing with otherwise it's gonna hop now you can mitigate this a little bit by speeding up the buffer slightly I don't want to go too fast this is still a decal it is still just a thin piece of vinyl I don't want to build up a lot of heat on it because if you do that then you reverse the whole process you've basically taken off the vinyl sticker altogether and I don't want to do that I just want to polish up the surface so keep your buffer moving don't go full speed um, if you have to maybe at most 1500 1600 maybe even 1800 rpm if it's a cool day if it's a hot day keep it under 2000 rpm otherwise you're going to run the risk of scratching swirling and possibly destroying the decal if you get too aggressive with it. So spread your heavy cut out, work it back and forth, top to bottom, bottom to top, left and right, doesn't really matter. Just keep the buffer moving. And just like all the other videos that I do, you keep it moving until you start to see that the product has basically worked itself down to nothing. If you do a couple passes left and right, top to bottom, whatever, and you don't notice a change in the overall surface or the reflection, and you don't see too much of the compound on the surface, well, it's pretty much time to stop. By the way, today's beer is a Melvin IPA. Melvin IPA out of a can is one of my favorite IPAs out of a can. I'd rather have it on tap, but, you know, I don't live at a bar, so I have to do what I gotta do. I also like Bodhisattva by Georgetown. Not as good out of a can as it is when you pour it into a glass. Odd. Anyway, getting back to what we're talking about. So if you see a sheen start to form on this surface, a lot of that has to do with the compound just kind of filling in the cracks on top of the vinyl. But it is starting to do some work, and so much so that I'm going to start speeding this up here in a little bit, and I'll let you check that out for a second. And then I'm going to do some ego stroking buffer work. And you're already probably starting to see that where I'm just holding the tail end of the buffer, not really controlling it, letting the buffer weight and the speed of the spinning head do all of the work for me. Oh, am I just grabbing the cord? Yep, that's me just grabbing the cord. Sorry, sometimes I need to do things to entertain myself. I don't suggest that you try this. The reason I was doing it was because this front piece of the uh, fifth wheel trailer here is really tall. And even standing on the bed of the truck below, I'm a short guy. I wasn't going to be able to get to the top. So I wanted to get as much down as I could while being on the ceiling and there you go not bad but look what it started off at so I'm gonna move on to the other side here this side and I'm just gonna repeat the process a little heavy cut a little buffer love and maybe a little bit more of that ego stroking tail holding buffer love that you saw just moments ago and for right now I'm just gonna sit back you can watch what I do um, I do pay a little more 
attention to the gel coat, those two little strips around that red triangle decal. I'll put the buffer up on edge for those and I'll kind of dig into them, going back and forth, maybe cross cutting a little bit. And then I'll just go flat and stay flat for the remainder of this section right here. But the program's the same. Use the heavy cut, spread it out, go flat, and then finish it out until it's almost gone. And once that's done, we'll probably get into a little perfected EXAC and do the exact same process. It's just a different compound to get a little bit shinier finish. Shinier finish. More shiny finish. A better gloss. How's that? In the meantime, it's time for my first sip of the nectar. Ah, that's good. And you can see it's hoppy here as well as it was on the other side for the exact same reasons. It's a, uh, it's got a lot to deal with the buffer head, and so it's having a hard time dealing with it. Also, I'm doing this one-handed and holding the phone with the other hand. So if I had two hands, I'd be able to stabilize it a little bit better. Not much. You'd still have some resistance and some uh, physics that would make it want to hop. But one-handed, you're going to have a lot more of that that you can't control as quickly and readily as you would if you had two hands. So, if you have the opportunity to work on your boat slash RV with a buffer and some compound, I highly recommend using both hands. One hand holds the head, the other hand holds the tail. That way you have a lot of control and you can stabilize it and take out some of that resonance frequency that the buffer builds up. Now, I've gone ahead and sped up the buffer wheel, and that also helps a little bit. The centrifugal force tends to stabilize it, kind of like a motorcycle or a bicycle wheel. The faster you go, the more stable you are. Now, again, try not to go above 2,000 RPM when working with a decal. Decals don't like heat buildup, and they certainly don't like it if you accidentally catch an edge. You will dig right into that decal, and you can also lift up the uh, corners if you have a corner that's lifted up already it's really easy to catch even if it's not sometimes just the friction of the buffer with the compound on it will lift up an edge so be really careful Now here I remember that instruction from my drill instructor back in the army who said, do as I say, not as I do, Private. So it sounds like I'm going really fast, and maybe I am. But again, 16, 17 years of experience doing this, I don't want somebody who's not comfortable using a buffer going at 3,500 RPM. Leave that to actual professionals if you don't mind. But if you are a professional, have some fun. Just know that you take the liability of snapping these decals off if you catch an edge. Now I slow it down here for a couple of reasons. One, on a curved piece, and this is the most curved piece of the entire section, going very fast kind of, well, it fights against you. Also, I wanted to get up against this weather strip, weather seal up on the top, and going super fast against something kind of silicone-y, gummy, isn't a great idea. But when you've got a fairly curved surface, going fast makes the buffer wheel go very flat, that's great on a flat section. On a curved section, it kind of screws with you a little bit. Any deviation in the center of balance of the buffer will have a tendency to swirl your product into the surface, and that's just not the finish that I'm looking for. 
So whenever I'm going with the rounded area, I always go slow. I only go fast when it's fairly flat and I know that the buffer can conform to that surface. Whenever the buffer is flatter than the surface is, well, slow it down. And you'll notice throughout this that I keep the buffer moving left and right, back and forth, almost the entire time. It never dwells in any one spot for any length of time. Again, this decal up on the top is almost unrecoverable. That being said, it does look a lot better than the far left, the black section that you see there that hasn't been touched. So this is perfected EXAC. And with that, I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did with the heavy cut. Just a little bit lighter, and I'm not going to put as much effort into it. But generally, the same rules apply. Go slow on corners. If you want to speed up, go ahead and speed up. But it is still a compound with a wool pad, so you are building up a little bit of heat and some friction there. So be wary of it. Keep your buffer moving. Keep it as flat as you can, as often as you can. I got up on an edge just to cross cut this uh, bottom piece of the decal is actually it butts up against a piece of gel coat so because it's gel coat I'm going to go ahead and cross cut but I won't necessarily do that on the vinyl I'm just going to have some more beer enjoy At this point, I would like to iterate that the buffer does almost all of the work. The weight of the buffer is enough, the friction generated by the wool pad is enough, and the compound is enough to do everything that you need it to do. So much so, I'd like to point out that I'm literally holding the uh, tail end of the cord here, and that's all I'm using. Well, okay, now I obviously switched it up a little bit. Maybe it's because I got some hoppy going on there and I didn't want a chance getting a swirl going. We're putting a big old hologram in there. But legitimately, the buffer's doing all the work. All I'm doing is telling it where to go next. Go over here. Go over here. Go over here. Don't spend too long here. Get back over here. That's it. That's all I'm doing. The buffer does all of the work. I'll also add that if you see my buffer on that lower part, the gel coat part, stop in a section or go really slow, like I'm going back and forth, down, 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 and then I kind of like, oh, I'm going to pause right there. It's because the buffer transmitted something through the handle that indicated to me that the buffer and the buffer pad wanted to or found some reason to hesitate and stop. I almost always listen to my buffer, and if the buffer says, hey, this is the section I want to play with for a second, well, I let it. And inevitably, it turns out that that's exactly what was necessary. On a decal, not so much. But on the gel coat part, if the buffer pauses and hesitates and it says that it wants to stop, well, I let it.
And if you caught my little edit glitch, it's because the buffer was actually at too steep of an angle and my fingers were getting sweaty. I couldn't actually pull myself up onto the handle with just my forefinger and my thumb. So I put my camera on pause, grabbed the buffer, and grabbed it by my hand. And it happens. Sometimes, you know, technical difficulties. All right, so here's what I'm talking about very specifically with letting the buffer do all the work. And this is just a demonstration. I do not want you to try this at home. It's stupid, it's slightly dangerous, and it's not something that I think many people would be comfortable doing. I wouldn't be comfortable if I heard that you were doing it. So try not to replicate this. This is just me showing off. That's all it is. Now, because I don't want this guy to get all sorts of bugs and road grime all over this RV and have a hard time cleaning it off, I decided to use fire glaze to make sure that it's easy to maintain and keep clean. And again, the decals didn't come out perfect. They were really, really hammered on. But I'm going to be excited when this guy says, hey, I came back home, my RV was covered in stuff, I hit it with a little bit of water and a light wash, and boom, all of it came off. That's why I use fire glaze. You should too, to be fair. All right, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe or give me a thumbs down if you like, but leave a comment.